lived only in our imaginations. There are no motion pictures of Columbus. But on this day, an historic event was recorded as no other has been. This was the den climbed atop this rock to become the first to circle the earth in space. Why for the unknown? Does it help the people of a troubled earth? Why is a man eager to do a job that could cost his life? Why? Why do we explore space? Five hundred years ago, another man set out to explore a vast unknown place. Columbus, a fool. He will fall off the edge. The idea is impossible. It has never been done before. I am sorry, but the king believes it is a poor investment. At the time, no one dreamed of finding a whole new world. Perhaps we too shall discover new worlds. On this day, we knew our spacecraft to be as safe as we could make it. Now we must test the last unknown, man himself. In orbit, he will suddenly weigh nothing. Will his body work well? Heart, lungs, brain? Will he be able to pilot and navigate? In the future, would we send our instruments alone, or would man himself explore space? Let us see how the experiments of this day help to answer our questions. the history of man has happened on that turning ball. There he learned to use fire, to make tools. He learned to use the land and the sea, and now the space around it. Yet two-thirds of the people there are without enough to eat. We have learned so much, and we have so much yet to learn. Seven, you have a 
go, at least seven orbits. Roger. Steam temperature is 5-3 in the suit. Oxygen is primary 6-0-8-9 on secondary. His movements appear odd because a special camera was used to study his reactions. Notice that the straps on his flight suit float. The man and capsule and, uh, weigh nothing. This is very comfortable at zero G. I have uh, nothing but very fine feeling. It just feels uh, very normal and very good. A moving globe in the capsule shows Glenn his position above the Earth. Now this is Friendship 7, have beautiful view of the African coast, both in the scope and out the window, Father. On the continent of Africa, it is midday. The people of Nigeria enjoy few benefits of science but their country cooperates in space experiments. So this is Friendship 7, Kano Kali. Friendship 7, this is uh, Kano Capcom. I read you loud and clear. How do you read me, over? Roger, Kano, loud and clear. Uh, Roger, loud and clear. Uh, what is your status, over? Sir, uh, Roger. Much of uh, eastern Africa is covered by clouds. A uh, sort of wispy, high, serious looking cloud. Uh, Roger. Uh, any symptoms of uh, vertigo or nausea at all, over? Uh, negative. Feel fine, uh, reach test. I have no problem reaching for knobs, and uh, I have excellent vision on the uh, chart. No astigmatism or any malfunctions at all. Friendship 7, uh, going through exercise. Uh, everything on the dial indicates excellent aeromedical status. Over. Uh, Roger. This is Friendship 7. I can see the dark side coming up in the periscope back behind me at present time. On the edge of the Earth's shadow, it is twilight. A ship on the Indian Ocean is equipped to communicate with the capsule in space. Uh, I have the constellation of Orion up here in the window now. I'm holding a position on it. With no feeling of up or down, Glenn aligns his capsule with a star and the horizon. This experiment showed how man could navigate in space. In the middle of the Earth's shadow, it is midnight. The people of Perth, Australia, are awake, waiting for John Glenn. Uh, this is Friendship 7. Uh, Roger, Friendship 7. We show you Capcom. How me, over. Uh, Roger, how you doing, Cordo? We're doing real fine up here. Everything is going very well, over. Very good, John. You sound good. Uh, shortly, you may observe some lights down there. You want to take a check on them out to your right, over. Could lights on Earth be seen from orbit? They might be useful for navigation. Just to my right, I can see a big pattern of light. Uh, Roger, that's Perth and Rockingham you're seeing there. Uh, Roger, the lights show up very well. And I'll thank everybody for turning them on, will you? Moving through the Earth's shadow at 300 miles per minute, the night ends quickly. In the uh, periscope, I can see the brilliant blue uh, horizon coming up behind me, approaching sunrise, over. Oh, the sun is coming up behind me in the periscope, a brilliant red. It is early morning in the quiet harbor of Guaymas, Mexico.
baja únicamente. La temperatura, 68 grados. Esperamos hacer con... Suddenly, John Glenn makes a strange report. Uh, this is Fred Gibson, and I'll try to describe what I'm in here. Uh, I'm in a, a big mass of some very small particles that are brilliantly lit up like they're luminescent. Roger, Seven. Can you tell us where they're coming from? They're coming by the capsule, uh, and they look like little stars, a whole shower of them coming by. Friendship 7, our Aeromed would like to hear if you have any comment on weightlessness or dizziness. Over. Uh, Friendship 7, I have no sensations at all from weightlessness except very pleasant. Uh, no ill effects at all. I'm not sick. Uh, all these little particles, there are thousands of them, and they're not coming from the capsule. There's something that's already up here. But John Glenn was wrong. Later flights proved the sunlit particles were from the capsule. This is why experiments are always repeated. I can see the uh, whole state of Florida just laid out like on a map. Beautiful. A moment in history. The first American to circle the Earth in space. Friendship 7, uh, will you take a deep breath? Roger, deep breath. <laughs> so this is Friendship 7, trying to unseal the face plate, over. And uh, preparing to take Xylo still at present time. The pill is part of an experiment to find out how well his body digests food without the help of gravity. Uh, John, the Aeromeds are real happy with you. You look real good up there. We'll see you next time around. Roger. Suddenly, a signal is received that could mean disaster. The signal warns that the heat shield may be loose. Without the shield, the capsule could burn up when it re-enters the atmosphere. 15 seconds to sequence. Radio contact is lost as friction with the atmosphere creates tremendous heat. Everywhere, people could see that man could go beyond his Earth. On this day, we placed a man and his environment into space and brought them back safely. We learned that a man reacted quite normally during four and a half hours without gravity. We learned what he could see 
on the dark side of the Earth and how he could navigate in space. Science is a way of learning. Each time, we ask new questions and explore a little farther. Three years later, in 1965, we were asking new questions. Each flight now carried two astronauts and lasted for days at a time. Now a new kind of experiment was tried. The sky sure is black. Take it easy now, you're in a vacuum. This film was made in orbit, 120 miles above the Earth. Okay, I'm got right from the spacecraft. The many-layered spacesuit protects him from heat and cold and presses on his body as the atmosphere does on Earth. You're right in front, Ed. You look beautiful. I feel like a million dollars. I will pick up. Through the umbilical cord comes oxygen to breathe and wires for communication. Okay, you want me to maneuver for you now, Ed? No, I think you're doing fine. What I'd like to do is get all the way out here. There's a glove floating out of the spaceship. Tiny nickel sensors send back information about his body responds. These experiments were designed to answer many questions. Could this spacesuit protect a man? in the most hostile environment ever explored? Could he control his movements with a jet of oxygen from this so-called space gun? Listen, it's all the difference in the world with this gun. When that gun was working, I was maneuvering all around. There's nothing particularly to get a, get a push on. Drifting without the pull of gravity, could he move about easily? Could he keep his sense of direction and not become disoriented? There's absolutely no disorientation associated with it. Yes. In each case, the answer was yes. One thing about it, uh, when Ed gets out there and starts wiggling around, it sure makes the spacecraft start to control. And so we learn, question by question, from the many experiments that make up each flight. Soon, men would repair rockets and assemble space stations in orbit. Soon, men would touch the moon and then continue beyond. For we are curious by nature, and the reason we explore is to learn. But there is a second reason we race to the moon. It grows out of an earthly competition in world affairs. Yet all men can benefit from the knowledge we gain in space. Think about space medicine. A device designed to monitor a heartbeat in space is now used for hospital patients and has already saved many lives on Earth. Think about weather. Clouds over any part of the world can be observed from space. Meteorologists may be able to plot the weather pattern of the entire Earth. We may learn to predict weather more accurately, or even control it, bring rain to deserts, and grow more food 
for the growing population of Earth. Think about communication. Already we can talk with and see people of other nations. Perhaps better communications will help us to understand one another better. Knowledge can be used in many ways to build or to destroy. The future of man may depend on how well we learn to solve our problems on Earth. How shall we use our knowledge? Why do we explore space?